वेलकम टू योर स्टॉक्स ऑर द आपका आई एम सुमेरा आप दी विद मी इन द स्टूडियो दिस आफ्टरनून इज रीमा टेंडुलकर फॉर द मार्केट इट्स बिन अ गुड सेशन ऑल दो इन द लास्ट फ्यू मिनट्स वी गिवन अप जस्ट यू नो टैप बिट ऑफ गेम्स एक्चुअली फ्रॉम द टॉप बट नेवर द लेस वे क्लोज टू लेवल ऑफ सिक्सटी वन फोर्टी राइट नाउ एंड ऑफकोर्स यू नो लेवल्स क्लोज टू सिक्सटी वन फिफ्टी सिक्सटी वन सिक्सटी रिमेन अ पॉइंट ऑफ कंसर्न देर सम न्यूज फ्लैशिंग ऑन योर स्क्रीन राइट नाउ विच इज रिगार्डिंग आईओसी that uh, according to government sources we understand that uh, the conclusion of all procedures for the IOC stake sale may happen by next week and that uh, the stake sale could go through any time after that before we get started on the show let's go across to Nantara Rai who is breaking this story at the moment Nantara Hi Samantha so this is what I'm picking up from my government sources is that you know mere formalities procedures that have mm. to be followed for this uh, divestment to go through should be concluded by the end of next week i understand that perhaps as early as uh, today itself the department of disinvestment is likely to inform the market regulator that, is it likely to inform the market regulator that, uh, that this transaction is going to be offline uh, do you remember when the egom had met on this issue it has said that it's going to be an online transaction so you know a mere procedure where it'll have to inform the market regulator mm. of this new development that has taken place the more the bigger headline of course being that once all of these procedures have been completed um ioc can go, uh, the stake sale of ioc can go through once more the boards of oil india and ongc may have to meet to seek formal approval of their board that loyalty of course has to be their board first um something the oil secretary has said in the past that this deal is likely to go through a 10% discount to the market price prevailing on the day of the transaction Okay, Nandara. Thanks so much for all those details. So, um, all the formalities to conclude next week. The 10% stake likely at a 10% discount, and this time around, it could be offline. Those were the key details. But on that note, let's get started with this show. Let me introduce the guests that we've lined up for you. So, Prakash Devan is here to answer all our stock queries, and for a personal finance check, we're joined by Hemant Rustaki. Good afternoon, gentlemen, and thanks so much for joining us. Straight away, let me go across to our first caller. It's Neha Lata Pandit. She's called us from Mumbai. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I just want to ask: Is it the right time to buy Sri Renuka Sugar? Okay. Prakash, uh, there is a bit of deleveraging which is taking place. The stock is corrected. Do you think she should go ahead and buy at these 2021 levels? Because that that price of open offer at 20.7 or something could it support the price? You know, a lot of. Uh issues that still remain unresolved regarding this entire uh, corporate restructuring that the company is getting into my sense is uh, while it's good in the long run you you have a huge debt which is kind of easing off you have a foreign player that's mighty enough to uh, do good things to the company coming in but uh, in terms of the price level it'll take some sort of uh, maybe another couple of weeks for the price to dis be discovered in, in in the way it could go all the way to 18 19 it could probably move to 21 and a half 22 so you know there's this whole uncertainty around the deal my sense is it's a great buy once that stabilizes because mm -hmm. remember sugar is at its bottom in terms of a cycle and globally we've had a huge drought in brazil which is which is one of the largest suppliers of uh, this commodity so things could only look up from here on and uh, with wilmar in it it could be better days for the company but just wait for another couple of weeks don't worry about the pricing too much but then uh, take your call and buy it subsequently do you think also from here uh, like a lot of analysts are saying that the next trigger will probably be the way uh, you know earnings for shri renuka shape up so do you think see that cycle improving for the company but yes sir well, that would happen because you know once they've got debt off their books and mind you they don't have to really pay too much for the foreign debt it's really mm -hmm. low cost and very comfortable it's the indian debt that was always the special deal but uh, you would wait, want to wait for another two quarters for the impact to start uh, showing on the earnings so i don't think it's an immediate uh, trigger but yes in the next couple of uh, quarters it start kind of behaving itself well as as a re-rated stock Indeed, again, that uh, pairing off of debt of 1,200 crores can save them an annual interest outgo flows to about 150 crore. But uh, Snehla, that's the advice coming for you. I think you should wait for some time. There is still a lot of uncertainty, and then perhaps you could look to enter into Sri Renuka. The stock, per se, expects it to move in that range of 18 to 21. Um, let's go across then to our next caller. It's Padma Sharma. She's called us from New Delhi, and she's got a personal finance query. Hi. Hi. Uh, I would like to know. Uh, Uh, about a mutual fund uh, mm -hmm. for short time horizon you know i have about 10000 uh, uh, rupees which i would like to invest okay. uh, on uh, higher education so, so is it a one time it? investment or are you looking at making a you know systematic investment plan with 10000 per month yeah per month it's a systematic plan yes okay 
Um, and also, if you could tell us your uh, time horizon as well as the goal, or you know, eventually, how much is it that you would like to make? Uh, there is no goal as such, but I would uh, the time horizon would be at least uh, two to five years. Uh, Padma, I think the question is, uh, Reema wanted to actually ask you is that how much money would you need for your higher education? So, you know, our expert can tell you whether or not you will be able to actually manage saving the kind of money that you require okay. with 10,000 rupees investment. Okay, because that, in that case, you know, because I would need a, a lot of money, I uh, intend to, you know, uh, send my daughter abroad. Okay. Uh, so, so I need a more, I need a lot. That's why I wanted to know whether okay, it so would be feasible. Okay, so maximum wealth maximum. creation then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Heman, take it away. Well, I think the important factor is uh, whenever you want to make any investment is the time horizon. Now, what he has mentioned clearly here is that the time horizon is uh, uh, two to five years. I think there he needs to be a little more definite there. Because what happens is if the time horizon is five years, you can take a little bit of risk by you know, investing in a hybrid kind of product. If it is uh, just two years, clearly the focus then has to be on, on uh, safety of capital. So I think the important thing first is that he must decide in deciding what kind of option he should be looking at. Well, since he's keen on basically investing in, uh, in mutual fund, which is the right way, because when you're investing for even the short term, you have an option of going into a traditional option like a recurring deposit, but the fact is that the returns are very, very low and the returns are also not tax efficient. Fortunately, as far as the mutual funds are concerned, there are a number of options there. For this kind of time horizon, I would say that you can either look at uh, you know, a short-term fund or a fund which follows a cruel strategy. Uh, the reason why I'm recommending a short-term fund and also the mutual fund is because, one, they have the potential to give you higher return, as I mentioned earlier, than uh, you know, what you get from uh, recurring deposits, and also the returns are quite tax efficient. So a uh, couple of funds that can be looked at here is in the short-term category, uh, UTI short-term fund can be looked at or Tata short-term fund can be looked at. But if the time horizon is a little longer, let's say two to three years, then an income fund which uh, follows a accrual strategy can be looked at where uh, Birla short-term opportunities uh, can be looked at. But like I mentioned in the beginning, I think the key factor is to decide your time horizon and then go for the fund option. All right, Padma, that's the advice uh, for you. Decide your time horizon. A lot of those factors actually are key to making your investments. A lot of stocks also hitting 52-week highs today, amongst them global offshores. Uh, there are also a lot of uh, these mid-cap IT companies as NIT Tech, InfoEdge, etc. And then there is, uh, you know, from the pharma space, there is IPCA Labs, Divi's Lab, Dr. Reddy's, Alembic Pharma, etc., along with Apollo Tires, Amara Raja. So let's uh, uh, talk about Divi's lab then. Uh, Rohini has sent us an SMS query from Lucknow. She had posted this query on moneycontrol.com and she says she wants to know the medium term target for Divi's lab. Prakash? I think uh, given the kind of momentum that we've seen post the numbers, uh, the, the stock is just in the beginning of a very, very promising trajectory. So for the next six to nine months, if that's what uh, correlates with the medium term for her, uh, she should be comfortably looking at about 1750 to 1780 kind of a band. Uh, and if somebody is patient enough to hold the stock for about a year plus two years, I think it should be the next big uh, pharma name uh, with, with the 2200 target after 12 months is what we've got. Okay, in case you wanted to, you missed out on the advice and stocks like in Devi's Laboratory as well as in the Personal Finance Corner, remember that you can tune in to moneycontrol.com and get more on this story or any of the other big business as well as economy related development. On that note, it's time for a break. We'll come back and address more of your queries on this very special lady special. Welcome back. European markets have come off marginally from the high point of the day, close to about 0.3 or 0.4%. So the CAC and the DAX should be up for you on your screen. Still holding up in the green, but just about with a gain of close to about 0.1%. And they're off from the highs. Um, apart from that, for our own markets, it's been steady. It's just that the Nifty, in fact, as we speak, the CAC and the DAX have dipped into the red as well. Um, for our own markets, it's largely steady, but it's faced some resistance around that 6150 mark. That's a level it's been unable to conquer. The high point on the Nifty stand at 6148. But let's go across and start answering our queries. We've got Reshma who's called us from Mumbai and she's got a question on PC jewelers. Hi Reshma, good afternoon. Hi, I have a query. Well, I have 300 shares of PC jewelers at the price of 96. Now, should I sell or should I sell? 
What would you recommend, Prakash? I think she just seems to have bought it. Uh, that, that's where the stock's kind of found itself in recent times. Uh, you know, if, if she has a long-term orientation, and Rishma, if I'm talking about at least the next two, three years, uh, you're comfortable holding on to this stock, uh, then it makes sense to do that. Otherwise, if you're looking at a short-term quick trade of sorts to make some money on the basis of some announcement that have come for the organized uh, retail jewelry segment, I think there could be some disappointment uh, for the short term. But uh, over the longest period of time, this company could give you decent returns for the simple reason that it's competing with some of the best players and it has also benchmarked itself uh, in the same way with a decent growth rate as its target. They've invested a lot into infrastructure and quality. And the, given the new norms that the government is uh, unfolding for particularly standardizing uh, gold jewelry sales, uh, some of these branded players will definitely benefit uh, quite a bit. So PC jewelers will definitely gain out of that. But as I said, the impact would take some time for, for it to translate into earnings and hence the price on the stock. So be patient and you could probably look at about 170, 180 uh, in the next couple of years. Uh, so till then it could be a volatile move, but uh, if you're patient enough, you should be getting your 30, 35% annualized returns. But Prakash, uh, she spent roughly 3,000 rupees in this trade. Do you think she should have just bought one gram of gold? <laughs> <laughs> Which would have been a better bet. Yeah, no, but I somehow feel, uh, you know, while gold is definitely something that assures and gives you that conviction, uh, the jeweler business, the jewelry business will also grow if gold grows. So I'm sure she's not going to miss out on that upside uh, from gold as well. Well, that's a good idea. I mean, especially some women would probably like that uh, better than stocks. <laughs> Okay, then um, that's the advice on PC Jewelers. Let's go across then to our next caller. It's Devashi Chaudhary. She's called us from Allahabad. Hi. Hi. Can you tell yeah, us your Devashi question? Yes. Yeah. yeah, Devashi online. Hmm. Go ahead. We can hear you. Pardon? Can you no, tell I wanted to uh, Mike, uh, ask you about this, my PPF account. Hmm. So I have want to have an account, a uh, PPF account, and how do I go about it? And what are the uh, benefits for this uh, PPF uh, thing? Hemant? No. Well, let me let me be, let me begin with the benefits of PPF. I would say that PPF is one of the best options on the debt side of the portfolio, especially if the intent is uh, to invest for the long term. In fact, I would say. You know, PPF scores over many other options in, in, in uh, more than one ways. I mean, one, uh, you know, your money is absolutely safe. Uh, second, you get guaranteed return. Currently, PPF is offering a return of around 8.7. But uh, remember that these, uh, uh, the return that they offer, the interest that they offer is, you know, announced every year. So that will keep on changing uh, from year to year. Uh, then uh, th there are tax benefits of investing in PPF. For example, if you invest in PPF, you get tax exemption under Section 80C. And also the interest that comes, is absolutely tax-free. So, uh, if the intent is to invest for the long term, I think I think PPF is uh, one of the best options that you can have. Uh, opening PPF account is uh, very easy. You can actually approach uh, you know any designated branch of State Bank of India or its subsidiary or uh, a bank or a post office, and it's very simple a process to open that account. You will, however, you will require uh, you know proof of proof of identity and as well as the proof of address. So, so some of the things that you need to carry with you in original is like your PAN card, your ration card, or Aadhaar card if you have, or your electricity bill. I think these are the things if you have, you should not have a problem in opening PPF uh, account. But remember that you can only have one PPF account in your name. All right, uh, that's the word. Uh, good time then to be opening PPF accounts because every year we hear that perhaps uh, you know new entries into PPF would not be allowed. So I guess it would be a wise idea to go and open your account at the moment. But uh, time for us to take another quick break. Come back in a bit. More on the other side. See you later. Welcome back. Just about 61.30 being held on the Nifty coming off of the highs. But nevertheless, it's a 42-point gain at the moment. Let's talk about some stocks then. Gunjan is on the line with us from Ranchi, and she has a query on HDFC. Hi, Gunjan. Hi. Hi. What's your question? My question is, uh, is it the right time to buy HDFC? Okay. And why particularly HDFC? Or do you like, uh, would like to bet on anything from the financial space? Actually, I'm a new investor, so I don't know too much about the market. 
Okay, so you think HDFC is then a steady uh, choice for you. Yeah. Uh, Prakash, uh, good call to buy HDFC at the moment or do you think there could be further lower levels which she could use to buy? But I, I guess that holds for any stock, uh, so she should definitely be ready for that. But I think HDFC is a great way to start your equity uh, career of sorts uh, as an investor. And uh, for a few reasons uh, that I can highlight very quickly. One, that the companies uh, had a stellar track record and a great pedigree, so you're in very safe hands when you hand over your money to buy a share of that company. Secondly, the company's growth going forward, while it's been a little bit muted in the past couple of quarters thanks to the slowdown in the entire industry, is very clearly looking at uh, about 18 to 19 percent uh, for this financial year coming forward on the FI15 basis, which means they will definitely do much better than a lot of other players. And that's a decent growth rate for a company of that size. So, th and the reason why they'll be able to do that is more because they're focusing on retail loans and not so much on commercial construction finance and stuff like that. So, I think it's a great company at decent margins. So, we could probably look at a target of thousand, which is which is also nice to wait for and make your money and uh, rejoice once you've done that. So, uh, but but make sure that you do it patiently enough, and it's not in a hurry that you're looking at making money from an HDFC. Okay, that's a pretty substantial 25% upside on HDFC if you do get that 1,000 rupees um, target. But uh, let's address another query that we have running out of time. Chandni has sent us an SMS from Nagpur. She can invest 40,000 per month. Her goals are children's education, child's education and marriage. So she would like to know uh, which SIP mutual funds she should be investing this in. Um, Hemant, while we do not know what the time horizon for her goals would be, but um, what would you recommend? 40,000 per month. Well, essentially, if you look at both the goals like child education and marriage, uh, they are essentially long-term goals. I'm assuming that if, the, if there are a time period of 13 to 15 years, if, if uh, you know, uh, investment is being started at, at the right stage, uh, then clearly I think uh, it is important to choose a right asset class because one, like I said, there is, you have enough time to make it grow and also these goals are very important. We generally require a large corpus to achieve these goals. Uh, so my recommendation would be to you know, invest through SIP in well-diversified equity funds. Yes, equity funds can be volatile, but the fact that you are investing for a longer term and also investing systematically, the volatility is actually taken care of over a period of time. So assuming an annualized return of 12%, uh, uh, I would say that the, for the first goal of uh, education, I think she needs to invest around 11,000 rupees, and for the second goal of uh, marriage, around 7,000. So I think with an investment of 18,000, if the investment con is continued for this defined time horizon, uh, the goals uh, should be achieved. Uh, uh, the balance money can be allocated to some other goals, or if she wants to have more uh, in, in this kitty, uh, the more can be added to this. Some of the funds that can be considered here are HDFC equity, which is a multi-cap uh, fund can be looked at, IDFC uh, premier equity, ICFC focus blue chip, and Birla Sun Life frontline equity. So there are three or four funds which can be considered. Like I said, the focus should be on investing in well-diversified funds. All right, uh, that's uh, another uh, idea actually for planning your goals. But uh, on that note, Prakash and Hemant, we'll have to thank you. Thanks very much for joining in this afternoon. Prakash, thanks for coming all the way to our studios. But uh, do remember, viewers, if you have any stock queries, you can always log on to moneycontrol.com, post your query there. You can also log on to the Money Control message board and send us your question over there. But do stay tuned. Closing Bell will be with you in just a bit.